And now, a story from the Appleseed. Thank you. When I was growing up, my daddy worked at the bank in town. And back in those days, the bank closed at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They were only open from 9 in the morning till 1 o'clock. And then after that, they had to do all of their bookkeeping work before they could go home. So what my mother knew was that after 1 o'clock, the bank was closed. And if she needed a babysitter for me, guess what? She would take me and leave me at the bank with my daddy while she would go to the beauty parlor or for a doctor's appointment or to go try on dresses she knew she wasn't going to buy to start with. <laughs> and I loved going to the bank. My daddy would give me a big adding machine that had a handle on the side, and he would give me the telephone book and tell me the bank needed all the telephone numbers added up. And I would go through adding up the phone numbers and adding up the phone numbers and adding up the phone numbers. And pretty soon, one of the paper tape would go all the way across the floor. And when it was time to go home, he would break that tape off and fold it up and staple it in the phone book to show how far I'd gotten so I could start at the same place the next time. And I could start and I could keep adding up the phone numbers when I went there. Now, there were, four, three, there were three men who worked at the bank, and those three men would take turns being the last one to leave each day and lock up at night. And one of those days, I was at the bank, and it was my daddy's turn to be the last one to leave and lock up that night. We checked around to be sure all the windows were closed because in those days there was no air conditioning. We would, the windows would open when the weather was hot. Close the windows and lock all the windows. Be sure the back door was locked. But the last thing my dad had to do was the big door on the vault before that door closed. In the back of that door, there were three time clocks that he had to wind. And what those time clocks did was if somebody like a robber got in in the night, even if they knew the combination, once you wound those time clocks, it would not open till 8.30 in the morning. So that was a very important thing for him to do. And that also took a little bit of time. So while he was winding the time clocks, guess what? He couldn't see me. And that's when I could pursue my favorite pastime, snooping and prowling around. <laughs> so that day he was winding the time clocks, and I was snooping and prowling around the desk that belonged to one of the men who worked there named Mr. Jack Way. I was snooping around his desk because on top of his desk, he always had a big fishbowl full of candy and chewing gum. I didn't do it <laughs> because that day there was something more interesting on top of that desk. There was about a half-empty pack of Cavalier cigarettes. I didn't do that either <laughs> because when you're about eight years old, you are not responsible for what your hands do. <laughs> you just watch them and see where they go. And I stood there and watched while one of my hands picked up those cigarettes and shook one of them out on top of the desk. And my other hand picked up the cigarette and put it in my pocket. And I had no way to get it back out of there. And about that time, we went home. Well, as soon as we got home, I got my little brother and I said, let's go out and climb up in the barn loft. Let me show you what I've got. And we left our mother who was fixing our supper and our daddy who was talking to our mother. And we headed out to the barn and we went up in the barn loft. That was a place we loved to play. There were bales of hay up there, not those big round ones, but the little rectangular ones that you could use like giant Lego blocks, you know, and make castles out of and little houses out of it. And we were up in the barn loft and I pulled out the cigarette and I stuck it in my mouth. And I was talking, you know, like I was in an old black and white movie. 
Now, from here on, everything that happens is my brother's fault. <laughs> because he said, smoke it, smoke it, smoke it. <laughs> I had no idea how to smoke a cigarette. But when you're showing off, you can't stop, can you? I had matches in my pocket because when I was eight years old, I always had matches in my pocket. <laughs> I pulled out the matches, I struck a match, I held it up to the end of the cigarette, and just at that moment, we heard my daddy come into milk. See, he always sang when he came to milk. He said, when you sing, it makes the cow happy. She gives more milk when you sing. And he would, as soon as he left the house, he'd start singing. And he would sing mostly songs from church. And he was coming out through there singing away. He was singing, For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And my little brother said, Hide it, hide it, hide it. <laughs> And I took that cigarette and I squashed it and blew out the match and I stuck it in a crack between two boards in the floor of that barn loft. But I didn't know that crack went all the way through. It just had hay trash and dust in it. And just as our daddy came into the barn downstairs, I pushed the cigarette into that crack and it came right through, falling straight down in front of him. Well, he must have gone blind. He didn't see it. He didn't even know we were up there. And we held our breath while he milked the cow. Oh, it seemed like it took forever. You know, he washed off her udder, and then he started milking, and I kept thinking, Go on, get it over with. We got to get out of here. <laughs> Finally, he finished milking and he went back to the house. And my brother and I, we came down and we went way around by the chicken house. We went way around by the garden. And we came in on the other side. And my mother said, oh, there you boys are. I was getting ready to call you. Supper's ready. And we sat down and we ate supper. And I kept waiting for him to say something. I kept waiting for him to say something. I kept waiting for him to say something, and he didn't say anything. And I started thinking, he doesn't know. We got away with it. My mother doesn't know. He doesn't know. We're smart. <laughs> we didn't get caught. <laughs> well, about that time, our mother said, boys, uh, we better go to bed because it's a school night. We better start thinking about going to bed. And my little brother Joe said, I don't want to go to bed. I don't get tired. <laughs> and my daddy said, well, boys, if you don't want to go to bed, how about if I tell you a little story? I thought, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> my mother said, well, it can't be a long story because it's a school night. He said, it won't be a long story. It'll be just right. Now, he was always telling us stories about things he and his brothers had done when they were little. And he said, let's see. Did I ever tell you about the time when Moody and Harry burned little Joe Medford's barn down? My mother said, I don't think I ever heard that story. He said, oh, it's a good story. I think this is a good time to tell it. He said, I believe Moody and Harry, two of his brothers, were about as old as Donald and Joe are now. And you know, Daddy was running for the legislature, and one Sunday afternoon, a man came all the way out to the farm to see him, and they talked about politics in the kitchen all afternoon. And when that man left, he accidentally left a pack of Camel cigarettes on our kitchen table. Mom and Daddy didn't know he left them because by then, Harry and Moody had found them. And they got that pack of cigarettes and they went outside 
and they started looking for a place where they could hide and see if they could figure out how to smoke one. They thought about hiding in the barn loft. <laughs> but when they thought about it, they were afraid that Daddy might go to milk and catch them. <laughs> so instead of hiding in our barn loft, they went up through the woods above the house, they went through the fence, they went down the other side of the hill, and they climbed up in little Joe Medford's barn loft. And they lit up one of those cigarettes, and they were passing it back and forth, smoking it. About that time, something they hadn't thought about happened. Little Joe went to the barn to milk. And when they saw him coming, Frank said to Harry, hide it, hide it, hide it. <laughs> And Harry took that cigarette and he squashed it and he stuck it in a crack between two boards up there in that barn loft. And those boys jumped down out of the back and they went running toward home and little Joe saw them running off. He knew them because they were all over the place all the time, but he had no idea what they'd been doing up in there. And he went ahead and milked his cow and he went back home and he went to bed and went to sleep. Boys, way in the night, that cigarette hadn't been mashed all the way out. And it came back to life. And the breeze was blowing. And the hay trash caught fire. And the old dry boards caught fire. It was a good thing it wasn't wintertime and there were no cows in that barn. Because since it was nighttime, nobody knew it was burning till the fire came right on through the roof and the whole barn burned to the ground. Well, our daddy and little Joe got together, and within a day or two, they had the whole story figured out. And our daddy had to build little Joe a new barn and pay for it. Oh. What do you boys think of that story? <laughs> My little brother said, can we go to bed now? <laughs> I'm real tired. And our mother sat there having no idea in this world why he had told us that story. But we knew that he knew, and he had given us one chance. You think we were going to get another chance? No way. No way. Well, since that barn burned down, it's been 110 years. And the story's still with us. My brother and I heard it. My three boys have heard it. My brother's daughters heard it. His three grandchildren have heard it. My grandchildren have heard it. The story just goes on forever, doesn't it? So if you have children, and you grow up and have children, and sometimes they need to be punished, if it's a little tiny thing that doesn't amount to much, give them a spanking. <laughs> but if it's something big that you don't want them to forget, tell them a story. <laughs> and they will never, ever forget it. Thanks for joining us for a story from the Appleseed. <laughs>